departure. There's no equivalent for that word in this language that you're teaching me to speak because you never leave. Yes. The vessel that God himself poured out of like liquid, like long-awaited rain on parched earth, like ink on parchment, like the water coming down the throats of parched men, that has left us. But he hasn't. He lives in us. I feel my lungs filling for the first time in a while filled with the spirit that he left behind, like the blood he stained these pages with, like the blood he transfused into my veins. He promises me that it's only for a little while, it's only while he's gone. His spirit will help me cross those darker miles, will put the strength back in my legs when they feel weak so I can make those last few steps to dawn. The promises penned by God to the lost manifested on the day of Pentecost with a shift in status quo when the lowly were suddenly made more righteous than Pharisees. Yeah, I know. It sounds about as possible as one carpenter rebuilding a temple in three days single-handedly, but it was done. He yanked resurrection from the pit of the impossible, dragged it up the mountainside of the improbable, and dropped it off on my doorstep, gift wrapped in certainty, so these dry bones could wear flesh again. And there's no disbelief here, because the dead, well, they come back to life all the time. I listen to the whisper in my soul that grows in volume till it's a groan that these lips could never utter. Begging God on my behalf to continue perfecting me. Living speech revealing itself one constituent word at a time so that I may walk this tightrope road of my faith and come through the things that try and tax and harrow, having cast aside the need to simply survive. Because after hearing the Spirit's patient counsels, I desire to be alive.